Doing well. This is going to be the portion for our second introduction to Adobe Illustrator. So up until this point, we have taken a look at creating various assets using the Shape Builder tool, as well as the shape tools available to us, such as our radio and various pot plants. And now it's time to dive in and start working on our character. Now, when it comes to thinking about creating your assets for animation, we need to put a little bit more thought to how our information is overlapping than say a, a flat illustrator would. So for example, in our image, if I sort of just remove these reference layers that we've got here, um, our illustrator obviously didn't need to think about the overlapping pieces of information, such as the pants disappearing from the thigh portion to the shin portion or how the foot would move. Um, there's obviously no information of this foot extending up behind this uh, sort of pair of jeans here. But where we as animators differ is we need to think about what information we're going to be making visible when we are animating our assets. So to try and demonstrate this, I've just drawn some basic lines just to give you an idea of how I personally would go about breaking this character down and walking you through how we would break this character down for animation. So when it comes to generating our assets, we need to think about the space that is going to be left behind it when we actually move that piece of information. So for example, if we had our character tapping her foot up and down, what information would be shown or hidden uh, by this layer of, of pant here? And we need to then compensate for that by filling in that information so that there's no blank space or um, sort of gaps in that visual information when we actually make this move. So to give you an idea, I've just sort of made these little bullseyes to point out where I would place my anchor points for these layers in After Effects, where I would then animate their rotation and movement. Um, and as we've been animating characters last term, so just applying the actual essence of life to them. And because of where I would place these anchor points, I've also then just highlighted the pieces of information that we would then need to over-exaggerate as one of the students uh, said in one of this week's classes. So taking a look at this foot, for example, I would need to overcompensate by making sure that I had at least a little bit of stub of foot disappearing behind this pant leg so that when I animate that moving up and down, it's not just being cut off at the, uh, the line that the pants exist. Okay, so with that in mind, that is how we're going to go about sort of generating our assets, always just making sure that they're overlapping so that when they move, we uh, don't have that information showing. And the fantastic thing about Illustrator After Effects at the moment is that um, we don't have to get it 100% accurate, the first pass that we make our character. Um, many times I've recreated assets like this and thought that I had it down pat and uh, needed to then dive back into the software to fill in information that I saw was missing once I actually had the entire piece moving. So there's no pressure to get it right 100% the, uh, the first time that we do it, but it definitely saves us time if we can get into the mindset of thinking about that process beforehand. Okay, I'm just gonna move these out the way, come into my reference quickly and turn off all of these dots, and we're gonna start by building our character. Now, as I've said, up until this point, we've taken a look at building our character using mostly just the shape tools that we had available to us, and then uh, playing around with those tools, mixing and matching with the um, Pathfinder tool or generating a couple of assets with the pen tool. But we're gonna be focusing almost completely on the pen tool today. All right. Now, as you can see, our character, being a typical human being, is quite symmetrical. We have two legs, two arms, and then a torso and a head. And the techniques that we use for these limbs are going to be similar. You can do the same technique on the front leg as you would on the back leg. So for the sake of my voice and for the sake of your boredom, what I'm going to do is completely explain the entire process of recreating one of the limbs. And then I'm going to have a speed through of me doing the other limb following those same techniques. And this should also then provide you an opportunity to practice rather than simply just painting by numbers. Okay, so to begin with, we're going to start off with our front leg, kind of the largest asset that we have in our character on screen. So in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer. So I'm going to come down to the bottom right of the layer tab, click on the create new layer button that we have available there. And I am going to label this as front leg. It's important that we get into the habit of labeling our layers correctly. And uh, I'm gonna have a small exercise for you guys to do at the end of this video with regards to our layers. All right, but before we get ahead of ourselves, let's dive in and start actually building these assets. I'm gonna grab the pen tool from my tools bar on the left. Shortcut for the pen tool is P. And coming over to properties, I'm gonna leave my fill on nothing and I'm gonna change my stroke to black. 
and I'm just going to set my stroke thickness to one point just so that I can work with the outlines of what I'm drawing here. And we're going to start by building off our foot. So basically just starting off with what we can see, I'm going to build our foot by beginning with the actual sort of fleshy portion. So I'm just going to create my first line that goes around the heel here. And then the rest of the lines that I draw, I just want to make sure kind of sit below the actual slipper. We're going to be making the slipper on its own layer and then combining the two afterwards. So when our layer stack is done correctly, the slipper will sit above the shoe. So by having this line disappear below where the slipper actually exists, we're going to be able to make it look as though that foot is sitting inside of it. So just a basic shape there. We're going to follow the curve that we see in the ankle there. And then we're going to add our little bit of a nub of uh, information up here. It doesn't have to be too large, but just something for us to kind of finick or interact with when we're animating. And that is that for our first piece of information. I'm just going to bring this down and actually work on top of the see-through layer here so that we can see our lines a little bit better. Turn off all of those. And... Uh, I'm going to need to rescale this, so that's fine. Let me just redo it very quickly. So again, just using the pen tool just to reintroduce you guys. Remember that in order to stop it from trying to predict its lines further, you simply need to click on the point that you've just made, and that will allow you to reset the curve that we have created. And just very quickly making off this shape and closing our shape by clicking and hold, or just clicking on the very first point that we created. I can always grab my direct uh, selection tool, shortcut for which is A, and that will allow me to adjust any of the paths or lines that I have placed. And we're good with that for now. I'm just going to move that skin out the way there. We can actually apply the color to this. So with my layer selected, I'm going to hit I on the keyboard for the eyedrop tool. And I'm just going to come on up to my reference image and sample the skin tone that we see there. Because our asset was selected when we clicked on something with the eyedrop tool, it automatically applies the color that we clicked on to our asset. All right, so that little piece of skin can chill there for now. I'm going to P for pen, dive back into my properties and set the fill to black. And we're going to work on this shadow portion next. In order to do that, all we're going to really need to worry about is just following this initial curve that we see here. And then the rest of it, I'm literally just going to make a big black blob. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I could go painfully and trace out the entire portion of the foot that would be covered in shadow. But there's a sort of function in Illustrator known as clipping masks that makes this a lot easier to do. So bear with me and I'll explain that process as we go forward. Once we've got our black blob of a shadow drawn, we're just going to bring the skin layer back to its starting position. And I'm going to make a duplicate of the skin layer. So with my asset selected, I'm going to hold down Option or Alt click and drag, and that makes a copy of that for me. All right, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to group the shadow and the foot together. So in order to do that, to better demonstrate, I'm just gonna come back over to my layers tab, and we can see that in my layers, I've got the path that my shadow is on and the path that my original foot layer is on. With them both selected, I can tell that they're selected by the little colored dots that appear to the far right of their names in the layer tab. I'm just going to simply hit Command or Control G. You can right click and select group, but let's start making use of our shortcuts. So Command or Control G to group those two together, and that there creates a group sub layer in our layer tab for us there. Okay, now for what we want to do, the next step that we need to do is grab the path layer. So that's our duplicate foot. And we're just gonna click and drag to make sure that that layer is sitting above the group layer in the layer stack. With that done, we're going to move the copy of the foot to sit back on top of the group below it. Now, to give you an idea of what we're about to do, this layer, this uh, duplicate foot layer that we've got here, is essentially going to act as a mask. We're about to tell Illustrator, only show the information that resides below this layer, so overlapping with this layer. And that's why we've got a duplicate of the foot, because it's an exact copy of the actual portion that we want to mask out. And uh, it's only then going to reveal the shadow portion that falls across that little stub. So let's see that in action. I'm going to click and drag to select both the sort of duplicate as well as the group below it. 
We're going to right click and we are going to select make clipping mask. Now what happens when we create a clipping mask, you'll see now that all of a sudden the rest of the black blob has disappeared and we're only seeing the portion of it that's falling across that fleshy portion of the foot. Let's come on over to our layers tab and just take a look at what happened there. So in our layers tab, if we see, we now have a single group inside of our main layer called clip group. We're just going to double click on that and we're going to uh, rename this as foot for now. And uh, we see inside that foot layer that there is a clipping path and that path sits above our original group. Now, if we turn the visibility for that path off, we can then reveal everything that is sort of sitting outside of that path. So by turning the visibility for the path off, we turn off the clipping mask effect. Turning it back on will then hide everything again. Now, what happens if I want to make an adjustment to these layers? They've all kind of been grouped together. They've been collected in this clipping path. It makes it a little bit difficult for us to make any edits to anything that we have here. So in order to make edits to this, first off, we need to consider the fact that the clipping mask is an exact duplicate of the original skin tone. So if I just come inside of the group here, we can see that there's the path for the shadow and there's the path for the original foot if I turn that visibility on and off. Now, if I wanted to adjust the opacity of my shadow, for example, that's fairly easy to do. All I need to do is to select that shadow. However, simply clicking on it selects the entire group and uh, that doesn't give us any opportunity to make adjustments. So we need to make use of the direct selection functionality in our layer tab. You'll see that as I click on these individual layers, we get a larger colored square to indicate that that layer has been selected. We can see that there's a smaller square in some of the layers above it. And these are kind of just visual indicators to show that there is something inside this layer group that has been selected inside something of this layer group that has been selected inside of this group that has been selected. All right, but you'll see that as I have it selected now, I can actually see the direct outline of it, even though it's being hidden by the clipping path. And I could come over to properties and I could change the fill to whatever I wanted, or I could change, I could apply a stroke, change the opacity, anything like that, which you obviously don't want to do, but just as an example. Now, if I wanted to change the actual foot itself, so let's say this fleshy portion here, let's say I wanted to make it larger or make it smaller, um, but only affect that particular layer. I need to again make sure that I have the layer that I want to affect selected in our uh, layer tab. I would be able to use my direct selection tool for example to just drag this point out but you'll notice that even though I'm dragging it I can drag it up and that kind of makes it disappear but dragging it out doesn't work and the reason for that is we still need to make any changes that we make to our sort of base shape to the mask as well, so to that clipping path. So right now I have that clipping path selected and I can interact with its individual points to reveal the changes that I made to the layer below it. Okay, so basically push comes to shove, it's a lot less hassle to make sure that you get everything how you want it before you group them together, but you'll also pick up experience and gain practice as you do this for yourself uh, moving through your assignments. Okay. Now that we've got this portion of the foot done and out the way, I'm just going to move that over to the side and I'm going to hit P for pen. My fill is already set to black and my stroke is set to nothing. So I'm just now looking at the bottom of the toolbar. We also have the fill and stroke options here. So I'm going to click on the swap fill and stroke options just to swap those two values around so that my fill is set to nothing, stroke is set to black and I can just dive right in and I'm going to trace out our slipper next. So again, making use of the pen tool, getting it as accurately as I can, while keeping in mind that I can come back and make any adjustments needed with the direct selection tool, which I will be doing because I can see some messy placements occurring. And we're just going to have our slipper like so. I'm going to hit A on the keyboard for my direct selection tool, and that's going to allow me to interact with the points that I've just made. And I'm just going to clean up my drawing slightly round out my corners a little bit more um, just so that we can keep that kind of aesthetic feel going. Not too much, just something like that. All right, and that is now the slipper made. We're going to select the outline for the slipper 
using our selection tool. And then I'm going to hit I for the eyedrop tool on the keyboard. I'm just going to come up and sample any of the sources of white. You can see the slippers are the same color as these dials here. So I'm just going to click on one of those and that will apply that fill to my slipper base. Okay. Let's move this out the way. The next thing that we want to make are these yellow polka dots that we see here. So making sure to click off of the slipper shape, make sure that it's no longer selected. We're now going to hit I for the eyedrop tool and I'm going to come up and just grab the gold that we see in this yellow bar in our reference image. Um, reason being because this image is so blown up and so pixelated, you can see that the different pixels are actually offering different shades of yellow. So I just like the yellow that we have in our central panel here. We can use that for our polka dots. Having clicked on that, it applies that color to my fill. And we're just going to come on down and grab the ellipse tool. So remember that can be found below the rectangle tool. And uh, we're just going to draw a couple of circles here. Now, as you've seen with the uh, clipping mask function, we don't need to worry about the circles that we're drawing overextending beyond the actual border of the slipper, because we're going to be using a clipping mask to create the illusion that these polka dots actually sort of end where the slippers borders are. So you're just going to wind up with a bunch of yellow circles kind of just floating in space like that. Once you're done creating these circles, we're just going to grab the base of our slipper and we're going to move it back to its original starting position. Now, again, as with the blob of flesh, we are going to create a duplicate of the slipper. This is going to act as our clipping mask. So we just make a duplicate of it um, so that we don't have to redraw it ourselves. Okay. We're going to come down and we are going to group the original slipper with all of the yellow circles. This is needed in order for the clipping mask to apply to the entire layer rather than to the individual assets that are sitting here. So just clicking and dragging to select the original slipper base and all of our yellow circles. We're going to hit Command and Control G. That will create the group over here for us in our layer tab. And we're just going to make sure that the path for our duplicate is sitting above the group that was just made. Okay, and let's bring that back down to sit where it originally was. We're going to click and drag to select both the um, sort of duplicate of the slipper and the group below it. We're going to click right click here and we are going to select make clipping mask. And as we can see, because of that copy of the slipper base, we were able to tell Illustrator essentially only show the information existing within that slipper shape and thus cuts off the uh, circles. You'll see that if you hover over them, they still have their full outlines. They still exist. They're just not visible. That sort of portion of the circle is being hidden. It's been told not to be shown. All right. So with that done, we're just going to move our foot back into position. Kind of make sure that it's sitting nicely here. And uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Again, because the foot group is sitting below the clip group that was made for the slipper, it kind of looks as though it just disappears inside of it. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to group these two groups together. So we're going to just click and drag to make sure that both the foot and the slipper are selected. Command or Control G to group them. And we can rename this as front foot. So we can rename that group as front foot. And we've now made our first asset. Okay, let's turn the visibility for that off out. So it's just out the way. We'll reselect our main layer here for the front leg. And we're going to now make the sort of shin portion for these pair of jeans. I'm going to hit P for pen. Make sure that my fill is set to nothing and my stroke is set to black. Thickness of one point. And for this layer, it's fairly simple. Um, this is going to be sitting at the top of our layer stack. So there's nothing that we need to worry about clipping with it. We just need to make the initial shape. So I'm just going to start off by placing my first point at the peak here where we can see that overlap occurring. That gives me a good idea of where the bend in the leg is. And just using the pen tool, nice and easy, just tracing out the actual leg of these pants. We're going to come up over the knee. And then we're going to round it out like so, just something like that. Okay, so it's essentially just a big tube, kind of. 
Once that shape is closed, we can select its outlines and I am then going to hit I on the keyboard for the eyedrop tool. And I'm gonna come up and just sample the blue that we have for these pants here. And that's that. That's all we need for this layer. I'm just gonna rename it from path. We're gonna change this to front shin and we'll turn the visibility for that off. All right, reselecting our main layer, coming back over to properties and hitting P for pen. I'm gonna change my fill to nothing and my stroke to black. I just find it a lot easier to draw something when you can only see the outlines rather than it trying to constantly fill in the color as it goes. And we're now just going to do the thigh portion. So that would be the bum area coming down into the actual leg. And this is a, an example for us to now practice this overlap that we've been talking about. So I'm not just going to end the line here where the uh, pant legs on the top shin begin. I'm going to ex overextend this line in here and I'm going to bring that up and round it to the knee essentially like so. And then just follow the lines that have been given to us and kind of guess how the rest of that thigh would look even though we can't see it in the illustration, perhaps something like that. And I wanna make sure that my overlap is working for me. So I'm gonna dive back into layers and turn on the front shin layer again. And I'm just gonna see here that cool, this shin is uh, essentially covering up our thigh all the way to this roundness of the knee. Perhaps I want to just extend this further in like that so that when we move our leg, it has a little bit more to work with. Um, maybe round it out like so. And I'll be fairly happy with that. Okay, so this is a good opportunity for us to just check that there's not going to be any major divots in that overlap. There might be a little bit of something here to fix. Um, I might just adjust the path over there and then I think we'll be good. So what I'm going to do is hit V for my selection tool just to reselect these outlines I've now drawn. I'm going to hit I on the keyboard for the eyedrop tool and I'm just going to click on that shin layer to get that shade of blue. All right. Now you can actually see if I have these both layers selected, let me just change the color code for this group so it's something a little bit more visible. We can actually see where that overlap is going to be. So this is kind of where the shadow for our leg is going to sit on our bottom leg. So we're just gonna turn off the visibility for our front shin and I am going to move our thigh layer out the way. I'm just gonna hit P for pen. I'll change my fill to black and we're just going to now draw out where we think this shadow would continue to fall. Um, and again, we don't have to stress too much about the shadow. As long as we get that initial line that we can actually see in the illustration, we're good to go because we're going to be using another clipping mask. So I'm just gonna move that base back to its original spot there. And once again, we need to make a duplicate of this. So we're going to hold down Option or Alt, click and drag and make a duplicate of that blue base. And I need to then group the original base of the leg with the shadow sitting above it. With those layers selected, Command or Control G to group them. I'm gonna dive into our layers and we're gonna make sure that the path, which is the duplicate shape that we've made, sits above the group so that it can act like a mask. Let's bring it down to its original starting position Click and drag to select both the path and the group below it. Right click and select make clipping mask. And we now have the exact portion of that shadow for us. Okay, let's turn on the rest of our sub layers just so we can get the layer hierarchy right. So obviously we want to adjust the uh, front shin layer. So we're gonna grab the front shin and just make that sit above the thigh. And we can just rename this clipping group that we made for that thigh layer there. We're just gonna call that front thigh. All right, cool. We're almost done with the front leg. I'm just gonna turn the visibility off for these sub layers now. And the next thing we wanna take a look at are these yellow lines that we see on the pant legs. Now, if we had to try and draw those lines directly onto their corresponding layers, um, keeping them aligned, keeping them looking as though they're actually joined when animating those layers would be a little bit difficult. So instead, what we're gonna do is we are going to draw these lines on their own layers, and we'll be able to then animate those layers or morph those layers using the Puppet Pin tool later down the line. 
So again, with nothing selected, I am just going to hit I for the eyedrop tool. And again, I think let's just source our yellow from the gold panel in our reference image. I'm going to hit P for pen and coming over to the fill and stroke options on the uh, bottom left of our screen. I'm just going to click on the swap fill stroke button there so that the yellow is on my stroke rather than the fill. And maybe we dive into properties and just increase the thickness of these strokes to about three points. We can then just trace out uh, these yellow lines here, just following their path. Okay. I'm going to P for pen, that resets the pen tool and that's going to allow me to start drawing the next line without uh, Illustrator trying to join the previous line to it. And yet again, we're just going to pen this out. I'll just have that line in somewhere up there. Cool. Once those lines are drawn, I'm just going to come back in and turn on the rest of my sub layers just so I can see how they look. I can then extend my yellow lines uh, so that they actually sort of extend all the way to the edge of the blue pants. I can see that I need to do a little bit of cleaning up with these points here. That's okay, we won't spend too much time fixing that. And just make sure that our lines extend all the way to the very edge. Now, we don't have the benefit of having a um, clipping mask over these lines. We could, but that would just make working with them later down the line a lot more difficult. So we're just gonna leave them as they are. From the zoom uh, sort of perspective that we're going to be looking at this, we're not going to notice the fact that those lines do not end flush with the uh, pant lines there. So with these two strokes now selected, uh, just turning off our pant layers, so click and drag to select these two yellow lines, hit Command and Control G, and we're going to call these front lines, like so. And with that, our front leg has been made. Cool. I'm gonna turn the visibility off for that front leg and lock its layer so that I can't interact or break anything there. I'm going to make a new layer and I am going to call this the back leg. Now, as I've said, everything that we just did for our front leg, you're going to do again for the back. So I'm not going to explain this process. You can just dive right in. I'm going to speed through and I'll catch you guys on the other side. All right, and with that, our back leg is now finished. If we take a look at our layers, we've got our foot, the back shin, the back thigh, we've got the line sitting on top, and uh, we then have our front leg. Obviously, the back leg layer is gonna sit below the front leg layer, and uh, we'll just correct that layer stack there, and we're good to go. So the visibility off of both those layers, and let's dive into working on our front arm next. So that's gonna be this portion of sleeve, the little bit of skin that is sticking out below that sleeve, and then the actual forearm here that's holding the phone. So let's dive into making this. Again, we need to make a new layer. I'm going to call this layer front arm. And uh, we're just going to hit P for pen. Let's dive into properties and change our stroke to black. Bring that down to one point. We can leave the fill off. And I'm just gonna start off by making the sleeve first. So what we're going to do for this sleeve is literally just trace out what we can see here. It's got a very nice flow to it. So 
using our pen tool, we're just going to recreate that as best we can. Good opportunity to practice with the pen tool. And there we go. Our shape has been made. We can obviously use our direct selection tool to allow us to create any adjustments or changes we might need. And uh, we're good to go. Let's move the sleeve out the way with the layers, with the layer selected. I'm going to hit I for the eyedrop tool and I'm going to come on up and just sample the nice orange that we have for that top. Okay. Next up, we need these little white lines that we see on our character. So we're going to hit P for pen. We'll change our fill to nothing and our stroke to white. Let's increase the thickness to three points. Uh, or we make it two points. And we're going to make a clipping mask for this as well. So we're literally just going to click and drag to recreate these lines. It's okay if our pen points sort of go over the edge of uh, the actual asset. And use our direct selection tool to make adjustments to these as we need. something like that. Maybe we will increase the stroke thickness to three points because these look a little thin. I'm just going to drag and select to grab all of these lines. I'll increase my thickness to three points. And what I'm going to do is just bring my t-shirt sleeve back to its starting position here. And again, we need to make a duplicate. So holding option or alt, clicking and dragging so that we've got the path we need for our clipping mask. We can then click and drag the original sleeve along with the white lines we've drawn on top of it. We're gonna hit command and control G to group them together. Coming on over to our front arm layer, we're gonna move the path to sit above the group. And we'll move the path to sit above the group. like so. Get it to align perfectly there. And then we're going to click and drag to select all of our assets and right click, make clipping mask. And that's how we get those lines to sit nice and flush there. Now the great thing about these lines, if you hit the direct selection tool, you can actually interact with them separately. You don't have to go into the layer stacks because they're simple paths. You can adjust them as we do with our direct selection tool. So we can make some slight changes there if we need to. But there is our front sleeve. All right, now this front sleeve you can see um, has a little bit of a shadow that's being cast and what is assumedly a bit of a flesh that's sticking out here at the bottom. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to move the sleeve out the way. And hit P for pen and I'm just going to change my properties for the pen tool. Uh, just making sure I deselect my asset so I don't accidentally change the properties for that. We just want to have a black stroke of about one thickness with no fill. And we're just going to add a little bit of a rounded out portion here. We don't want to push it too far. Um, our forearm will cover most of it. But just so that we have that information here. Just going to round that out. And with the shape selected, I'm going to hit I for the eyedrop tool and just sample our skin tone again. And uh, we'll just move our sleeve back to its starting position and adjust the layers like so. Okay, now we're not going to apply the shadows that we see on the um, upper portion of the illustration. And that's mostly just to save time. We've got uh, the practice down for the pants, so we're not going to be making an exact duplication of this. It's also going to take a lot of effort to make sure these shadows fall exactly where we need to and they become difficult to then work with when we animate on something a little bit more complex like the top. So we're going to ignore those for now. We're simply going to click and drag our sleeve and this little sort of stump of skin that we have here and hit Command or Control G to group those. And we're going to call this front sleeve. And I'll turn the visibility off for that. Grabbing our main layer again, I'm going to hit P for pen, change the properties so that my fill is nothing and my stroke is black. Thickness at one point, and now we're just going to trace out our arm. So I'm going to start off at the crook of the elbow and just start tracing out what we have here. 
this hand holding the phone. And that kind of goes there. We can always make adjustments once we've made the phone as well. Um, let's do something like this. Make sure that we get the entire elbow. And this layer is going to be sitting below our sleeve. So I'm just going to round this out a little bit like that. And uh, voila we have got the first pass for our arm. Now with our outline selected, I'm gonna hit I for the eyedrop tool, and again, just sample our skin tone to apply that color there. And then I'm gonna move this out the way so I can focus on building the cell phone. Now this is technically on the same layer as the hand. We're not going to be doing anything intense with the phone, so we don't need to worry too much about that. We're just gonna have a rough cell phone kind of sitting and then join to that to the same layer for our hand here. So in order to do that, we're gonna make sure that nothing is selected, make sure that you've clicked off of the arm that you've just drawn. And what we're going to do is we're gonna hit the I for eyedrop tool. And we're just gonna sum up, uh, come up and sample the color from this cell phone screen. It's kind of like a bluey gray. And with that color now set to our fill, we're just gonna hit P for pen and we're literally just gonna draw out the inside of this cell phone screen here. Make sure obviously that it's disappearing far enough behind the hand. It's okay. This bottom portion here, again, let me just change the color code so you can see this a little bit easier. It's okay what uh, we, it doesn't matter really what we do with these points here because that's gonna be disappearing below the hand, but we do wanna get the correct sort of placement up here. All right, so once you've got that screen drawn, I'm just gonna hit V for the selection tool and deselect my shape. I'm gonna come back up here and we can see that there's kind of like a blue border around the phone. Now again, because of our pixelation, it's a little bit difficult to get the exact tone. So for the sake of brevity, I'm just gonna hit I for the eyedrop tool and click on this lighter blue pro portion of the radio. So it applies that color to the fill there. And we just need to get the hex code for that blue. So you can see it's been applied to our fill here at the bottom of the tool panel. I'm gonna double click on that fill to open up our color picker. Our hex code has already been highlighted for us. So all I need to do is hit Command or Control C to copy that information. And then with my selection tool, I'm just gonna click on the cell phone screen that I've drawn out. I'm going to click on the stroke option here, and I'm going to double click it to open up our color picker and paste that hex code so that it gets applied to our cell phone screen. All right, with that now done, we're gonna move over to properties. We're gonna click on the word stroke and we are going to change the alignment to align to outside. So we did this in our previous session as well. We're just gonna increase this to four points. Okay, with that done, I'm then going to hit A for um, the direct selection tool on my keyboard. And I'm just going to select these individual points here and I'm just gonna round them out ever so slightly. Just so we've got a beveled feel to that phone. We don't need to worry about rounding out these corners because we're not going to be seeing them. We obviously don't wanna push the roundness too far. We still wanna maintain the illusion that this is sort of a rectangular cell phone. But there we go. Might hit V or maybe I just hit A for my direct selection tool and I can actually select these individual points that exist here and I can shift that out to just scale out my phone a little bit. Okay, now in order to get this sort of sense of depth that we have on the phone, if I just move the screen out the way slightly, you can see we've got a sort of black drop shadow portion there. We're not going to be able to apply a drop shadow, unfortunately, it's not going to work that well for us. So we're actually just going to draw this out for ourselves. So I'm gonna make sure that nothing is selected by clicking off of my cell phone there. I'm gonna hit P for pen. I'm gonna change the fill to black and the stroke to none. And I am then just going to draw a uh, sort of black rectangular shape over the phone like this. All right. 
So once you've got that black bar kind of penned out there, we're gonna dive into our layers and we can see we've got a number of paths over here. You can see the black path. This is obviously the latest shape that we've drawn. So I'm gonna make sure that I move the black path to sit below the blue cell phone path. And with my direct selection tool, I can then sort of just drag this out so that it aligns a little bit better there. Actually looks like it's coming off the phone. And I'm also going to bevel the bottom right hand corner there slightly. And that creates that quite nice illusion there. Obviously the illusion gets broken on this far side, but we're about to fix that now. All right, so once our phone is pretty much done, we can actually just select these layers and hit Command or Control G to group them together. Then we're gonna grab the layer for our arm, move it back to its original position, and we're gonna make sure that the path for our arm sits above the group for the cell phone. And then I can make adjustments by moving the phone slightly, perhaps to there. And I can adjust my arm by just changing where these points kind of end so that uh, it looks like my character is actually holding that phone. to something like that. All right. And with that done, we're going to drag and select to grab both the arm as well as the group for the cell phone. And we're going to hit Command or Control G to group those together. And we're going to rename this group as front forearm. Can turn the visibility for our front sleeve back on and we're just gonna change up the layer stack so that our front sleeve is sitting above the front forearm. All right, so. The exact same thing for the back sleeve and the back arm. There's something slightly different that we'll be doing for that line that we have on the thumb. So I'll explain that when I get there, but I'm now going to whiz through and I'll see you on the other side. So have fun practicing for that. Okay, so for this hand, we're not going to worry too much about that line that we see there dividing the thumb from the fingers. We just want the initial skin tone to sit below it and then we are going to create a clipping path in order to add that line. We're gonna move that out the way and hit P for pen. We'll change our fill to nothing and our stroke to black. And we're just gonna draw that sort of separation line that we have there, to something like that. And I'm gonna bring my flesh tone back to its starting position. And just realign. And it's okay if this line extends out into space because uh, obviously we've got our clipping mask to help us fix that. So that's looking pretty good. Last thing I'm gonna do to this line or this uh, black stroke that we've got here before we create our clipping mask is I'm going to come over to stroke. I'm just gonna change the cap to round cap just so we've got a nice round edge on the inside there. With that done, we need to make a duplicate of the arm, group the original arm with the black line that we've drawn, make sure that we bring our path above the group and set that path back on top. Click and drag and create a clipping mask. We can call that our front forearm. Same process for the back sleeve as we did for the first, initially just pen it out, draw the white lines and create your clipping, path, uh, clipping mask accordingly. sit above the sleeve. Now obviously we have a lot of information missing for this uh, stub of the arm here but if we take a look at our reference image um, just in terms of motion the planning that we're doing for that there wouldn't really be a lot of motion on this back arm. I'm not planning for motion to occur so I'm not going to fill in that space too much there we're just going to allow our torso to block that for us. Uh, what I would do for this is maybe just a little bit of a tapping in the in the wrist or something like that while she's listening to music. 
Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about filling that, but I can always come back into the software and fix that up at a later stage if I change my mind. So for now, that is our back arm done. Let's turn on the layers that we've got so far so we can see what we're looking at. Um, our back arm, that's obviously going to go above the back leg. So right now we've got our front arm at the top of the layer stack, then it's front leg, then it's back arm, then it's back leg. So let's move on to making the torso. Turning all of those off, creating a new layer. I am going to rename this layer torso. And for this torso, it's kind of a combination of what we were doing for the skin of the foot. And uh, then instead of what we did for the slipper, we would just make the t-shirt instead. So let's start off with the fleshy portion first, and then we'll make the t-shirt and combine the two together. So I'm gonna hit P for pen, come on over to properties and change my fill to nothing and my stroke to black. And using the lines that we can see in our reference image, we're just gonna kind of draw out Kind of uh, makes me think of like a plastic pawn piece from a game of chess. It's a little bit there and a nub of flesh extending up into the head so that uh, if we move that head up and down, this information doesn't just cut off there. And that's looking fine. I might just round out this edge a bit and we can move that out the way. I'm gonna hit I on the eye, uh, sorry, for the, on the keyboard to get the eyedrop tool and just sort of copy across my skin tone there. P for pen and change the fill to black. And we're going to make a shadow being cast here. So I'm just gonna fill out this space with that. Move our neck back into position. So that would be kind of there. I just wanna make sure that the shadow falls off completely. Some might make some slight changes to this, just like that. There we go. We'll make a duplicate of our skin. We'll group the original with the shadow. Dive back into our layers and make sure that we move the path above the group and set that back on top to create our clipping mask. Okay, so there is our neck that has been made. I'm gonna hit P for pen and let's make the t-shirt next. So I'll change the fill to nothing and the stroke to black. And I'm just going to draw over what we can see here. Kind of guessing where the shirt would extend to by kind of seeing where we can see it. And that might round out to about there. I'll bring this up so that I can use the lines to create the sort of uh, bosom. Just something like that. All right, come back over to my layers. I'm just gonna turn my front sleeve on so that I can sample the color for it there for my t-shirt. Turn that front arm back off again. And we can then move the t-shirt out the way. So next up, we obviously now need to make these lines or stripes sitting on top of it. So I'll move these layers a little bit further, hit P for pen, and I am going to go over to properties and change the fill to nothing, stroke to white. Let's make them two points thick. And we're just going to kind of get that initial line and I'll just end the point out there, just imagining what it could terminate in. A duplicate of the base of the t-shirt and group the original with all of the white stripes that I've just drawn. We'll move our path above the group so that we can then sit our mask above it. Click and drag to select everything there and let's make a clipping mask for that t-shirt. Then we can bring our neck back to its starting position. Obviously just making sure that that layer of information overlaps. And then I'm gonna click and drag both of them and hit Command or Control G, and that is already our torso. I'm just gonna relabel that group torso again. Okay, 
So let's get the correct layer stack again. Um, our torso, we are going to move to sit below the front leg. So your layer stack is going to read front arm, front leg, torso, back arm, back leg. So you can see that I do need to fill in some space for that back arm, so that's fine. Let's come in and quickly fix that up. So I'm going to come into the back arm, we're going to come into the, um, you can see here I relabeled it wrong, so we're just going to call that the back forearm there. And to start off with, I'm just going to change the path that we can see for the actual clipping path. And I'm literally just going to extend that out there. Then I'm going to come into the main group and select the path for the actual arm layer and do the same thing. Kind of just drag that out just so it fills in that space there. And there we are good to go. Next thing that we need to make is the head and the hair and then the headset and we're done for our character. So let's turn off the visibility for those layers. Let's make a new layer and call it head. And uh, how we're going to go about creating this head is we kind of want the face and this sort of helmet of hair here to be on one layer, or at least that's how we're going to be doing it today. And then we'll have this main mass of hair on its own layer so that that can be animated separately. Okay. So in order to do this, what we're going to do is with our head layer selected, I'm just going to hit P for pen. I'll just change my fill to nothing and my stroke to black. I'm going to start out by tracing out the face that we can see here. And I'm going to extend this up to sit below that helmet of hair, just as like a big oval. Hit I for the eyedrop tool and let's sample some skin and we can move that out the way. P for pen, let's change the fill back to nothing and the stroke back to black. And we can then pen out this helmet of hair that we have here. Don't worry about that uh, lock of hair that we see there, we'll get back to that in a moment. Now, our head layer is going to be sitting on top of the neck layer because I haven't had a chance to actually go and test out our animation yet. I'm not entirely certain. This is like the one area that's, that I'm a little uncertain about when it comes to the actual assets on screen. So I'm just going to continue this head helmet to about this point here. And uh, kind of just have it do something like this. And I would then go into After Effects and kind of just test what the motion is looking like and then I could make changes here. But again, if we don't make any drastic changes to the actual head, if it's kind of just bobbing up and down, this wouldn't become that relevant. Okay, so with our layers selected, I am then just going to change the fill to black and I'll turn the stroke off. And then we're going to do this little lock of hair over here on that strand. So I'm going to hit P for pen. And I'm literally going to just pen out this lock of hair. To sit like that. And we're going to change the fill to nothing for that stroke that we've just drawn. And we'll change the stroke to black. And with my selection tool, I'm going to double click that strand of hair to bring us into our isolation mode. I'm going to grab my width tool, shortcut for that is shift W, and I am going to introduce some thickness to this hair, like so. Remember that holding down option or alt allows you to click and drag to increase the thickness individually to either side. And I think that that's looking pretty good. I might just change where this path ends, so it kind of overlaps a little bit better there maybe change the path even more. All right. With that done, we're then just going to move our face back into position. We're going to come into our layers and we're just going to change these up a little bit. So I'm going to select my face and my helmet of hair and I'm going to group those two together. And I'm going to call that head. And then I'm going to take the path for that strand of hair and I'm going to drop that below the head just so that we can see it disappearing slightly behind the face. And that helps to increase our illusion of depth. 
and we're just going to call this uh, hair strand one. Okay. Cool. And the last thing we want to do on this head layer, so I'm just going to turn off our sort of head sub layer quickly, is we just want to add this um, scrunchie that we see here. Now, this is a little bit difficult to get right. We're going to add it to our head layer. Uh, it might stick a little bit over the neck, but that's okay. Um, because if we add it to the hair layer that we're going to make later, that just wouldn't work out for us in terms of being able to animate it properly. So again, just getting a black stroke so that I can trace out this shape here. Just wanted to come and kind of just round out by the neck. And I could always mask that in After Effects if I needed to. So if I wasn't happy with um, how much of this hair, uh, hair band overlapped with the neck, um, I could then just mask it out using some techniques in After Effects later. So with this crunchy selected, I'm gonna hit I for the eyedrop tool, and I'm just gonna come up and sample the nice light yellow that we see in our reference image. And there we go, they can sit above the head. Okay, cool. So then with that done, we're going to close up our head layer and turn that visibility off. And let's make this big mass of hair next. We'll make a new layer, we're gonna call that hair. I'm gonna hit P for pen and change my fill to nothing and my stroke to black. Now, in terms of animating, we wanna try and identify sort of different pieces or elements that we have in our reference image that could have secondary motion or extra motion added to them to help sell the illusion of our character living and breathing. So rather than penning out all of these little loose hair strands that we have here, so this one at the top, this one here in the middle, and this one down here, we're gonna focus on simply penning out the main body of hair. So we'll ignore those initial strands. And uh, we're gonna place those strands on their own layers. And that is going to allow us an opportunity to apply secondary motion to them later in After Effects so that they kind of overlap and move at a little bit of a different rate from the main mass of hair. So for this main mass of hair, I'm going to assume that it kind of just rounds out a little bit here and we can then have that coming up to here and just closing off our shape. All right, so with that done, I can have my shape selected and we just need to click on the swap fill stroke button and that will apply a black stroke there. I'm then going to hit P for pen, and with my uh, asset deselected, I can just click on the swap fill stroke button once more. And we're just going to draw in the stroke for these hair strands that we see here. Let's quickly draw those in roughly like so. And then I can double click on one of them at a time to enter isolation mode. Grab my width tool and uh, just apply some thickness to these, like so. Double click to exit isolation mode, double click to dive back into it. Okay, maybe we make this a little bit thicker here. And that's that for our hair. Let's come on over to our layers and let's turn everything on so we can get the correct layer stacks going. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're just going to dive into our hair layer and I'm going to rename these. This will become important at the end of the session. So we're obviously going to call the main body there. I'm just gonna call that hair. And then each of these hair strands that we have, I'm just gonna call them hair strand followed by a number. Now we have one hair strand under the head layers, so I'm gonna start by calling this one hair strand two, hair strand three, and hair strand four. Okay, just get this labeling cleared there. All right, now in terms of layer stack, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the main layer for the hair and we're gonna drop that to sit below the torso layer like so. 
Okay, and you can see that there is some missing information here, but that's okay because we are going to fill that in with our headphones. I might just grab my sort of main head layer and just reposition the hair itself slightly. So using my direct selection tool, I might just drag this in and fill in these gaps here like that. And this hair here, I'll just increase upwards just so we don't have any gaps forming. All right. Then what we'll do is just turn off our head layer so we can see, maybe we turn off the torso as well so we can see these headphones. In fact, let me just turn off all the sub layers for now, except for our reference. Okay, so we're going to make one last new layer for now and we're going to call that headset. And what we're going to do is we just want to sample the color that we have here first. So coming on up to our reference image, I am going to hit I for the eyedrop tool and I'm just going to sample this lighter sort of ring of color that we see here. We're going to make a very simple headset. So that's kind of like a nice turquoise blue there. And uh, I'm just going to then come on down to my reference image. I'm going to grab my ellipse tool and I'm just going to draw a circle that just goes out and touches that lighter color. We're going to add a stroke to get that uh, darker, thicker portion in there. Okay, so we've got a sort of uh, yellowy, uh, yellowy, a greeny blue circle there. Making sure that that shape is deselected, so I've now clicked off of it. I'm just going to come back up and hit I for the eyedrop tool. And I am going to just source this uh, purpley blue color that we have for the actual headset. I'm going to double click on my fill box at the bottom of the toolbar so that I can copy this hex code. And then using my selection tool, I'm just going to grab the circle that I originally drew and apply the hex code to my stroke. We're going to come over to properties, click on the word stroke and change the alignment to align stroke to outside. And we're just going to increase that stroke to let's make it five points. All right, let's move that out the way so we can do the headset or the, the actual sort of arms for this headset next. So what I'm going to do is I am going to <clears throat> just come on up and resample that color just so that it applies it to my fill for me. Hit P for pen and we're literally just going to draw this out. So it kind of does something like that. And we might need to make an adjustment to make it look as though it's sitting over the head, but just something like this, really. With some minor adjustments, maybe thicken this up a little bit, round out these bottom edges, and bring that ear cup back down to sit below it. Okay. And we'll make sure that that's working by just turning on our head layer and I can then make an adjustment to the pen path that I've just drawn. So it just sits like that. And taking a look at our layer stack, we have now completely recreated, if I turn off the reference images here, uh, we have completely recreated all of our assets. Nicely done, my dudes. So I hope that you found this um, interesting and found it practically useful. Uh, we've taken a look at using the pen tool to generate various assets. We've also taken a look at how to generate clipping paths or masks so that we can uh, hide and reveal certain areas of information. And we've also took, um, taken a look at the thought process of thinking about over-exaggerating and overlapping uh, pieces of information to make our lives easier when we actually make it move. Um, that is going to be that for this portion of the video and I'll see you in part two.